Hi, my name is Mark Jager. In this six-part tutorial, I'm explaining and demonstrating time-lapse using a RED DSMC2. This is part three where we get into the really useful settings for time-lapse. I'm not repeating material part by part. As such, I suggest you watch parts one and two if you didn't already. In the DSMC2, there's an internal time-lapse timer mode. In this mode, the DSMC2 records at a specified interval in seconds, number of frames per interval, and number of intervals. This is three easy choices. Here are the settings that we're going to do in the camera. We select Menu, Settings, Recording. First up, we put in Internal Time Lapse Timer. That brings up a different dialog. We want to set the number of frames per interval, in my case, one. I want to have a three second interval and I want to record as it says here 480 frames total. Now when you set the interval it needs to be longer than the number of frames times the time per frame. Uh, if you don't set the limit enable button here it will just keep recording till you run out of battery or memory. I frequently do not set the the limit enable so that if I'm in a sunset situation and things are going a little longer than I thought they might, uh, it's okay. It will keep going until I'm done. Here are the key steps in the field. The DSMC2 is on a robust tripod. You may choose other settings, but I selected 10 to 1 compression, 8K resolution, 6500K white balance, 148 second shutter, F8, and ISO 800. I'm using an ND filter. I have a good black shade and enough battery capacity. Here's our example shoot. It gives you an idea of what a simple time lapse looks like. As always, you need to choose the composition, the degree of time compression and resulting apparent motion speed, the amount of motion blur, and the exposure value settings. Now power can be an issue. Time lapse for landscapes can easily be 30 to 60 minutes or more for shooting plus warm up and setup time. Be sure to have a source with enough capacity. Memory capacity is not frequently an issue as time compression comes into play. If you shoot one frame per second, you're recording 1 24th as much information as continuous video. Now, scene exposure value changes can be an issue during shoots, getting brighter, darker. To compensate, you can adjust aperture on the fly. Post-processing will be easier if you keep the adjustments to one-third stop per change. I'll discuss post-processing in part six. Changing shutter speed is not such a great choice because it means the active black shade will need to change, which creates issues. Stay tuned for part four, where I add frame processing to the skill set. The flexibility continues to increase. Thanks for watching.